What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Revived, episode number 28. I am your host, as always, Shane Craig, and joining me is the lovely Jesse Craig. Howdy. I think we've got a pretty good show this time. You know, we missed a week, and then we were, like, late on a show, and this one's, like, a little bit late today, but whatever, we're going to get it out today, so be on the right day anyways. And I think we've got a more normal length show for you guys this time around. I've got a few duo related things as well as maybe just some other, you know, kind of somewhat related stuff. So I think we've got a pretty good, pretty good show for you guys this time around. If you happen to be listening on whatever podcast provider you may be on, I do want to remind you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, maybe hit the join button if you're on YouTube. In fact, we are up to now, I think 14 members on the YouTube channel, which is fantastic. That costs you $2.00 per month and it does go to us. I think YouTube takes a little bit of that, but at any rate to the last, you know, group of you guys that have subscribed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start like every week screen capping if any new members pop up and putting that out on social media and on the YouTube uh, community page to just kind of say thanks until we can get a better plan for what to do with that stuff. But those are all great things you can do to help support uh, the channel, the podcast, etc. So I guess that's enough, uh, waffling about on an intro let's just start talking about some of the stuff that happened over this last week so i made a video about a device called the astro slide which uh that sure is a name for a device <laughs> what do you what what does what your mind because maybe i'm just uh maybe i'm just a weird guy i don't know but my my brain goes uh maybe to a different kind of place when i hear astro slide what where does your mind go when you hear astro yeah. slide i mean i don't feel like i really need to say but <laughs> maybe not the best name so if you don't know the astro slide is not something that you purchase in the family planning department of your local grocery store <laughs> it is a device it is an android device which can also run linux which is pretty cool and what this thing is is it looks like a pretty normal phone and then you slide the screen up and then it tilts up like that, revealing a full mechanical keyboard, like an actual proper mechanical keyboard. I'm going to kind of do a little overlay here. Oh, it's here. really cool. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm going to do a little overlay here on the other screen, if anybody wants to see kind of some of the stuff about it here, it looks really neat. I'm like really into this thing's design and that keyboard looks legit as hell it, mm-hmm. it, it just it just looks did, did you did you pull it up oh um i mean i've seen it but i will also okay. oh, i just want to make sure you'd actually you'd actually seen uh what i'm talking about it just it looks really really cool and it got me kind of thinking we've both used android devices before mm-hmm. with you know hardware keyboards I actually you know while we're sitting getting ready to do this show I actually pulled out this guy, the BlackBerry yeah. <laughs> Key One, which is a phone that I actually did use for a good minute. Um, I used it for a while too. Um, you have both of them. You have both the kind of the the matte black, all black, and then the one, the one with the silver. silver. Right, and that's the one that I use when you got the matte black one which I loved using that phone. I really did. I think the only thing I didn't like was just the camera quality. I mean, for me, there's not going to be ever a day where I'm going to carry two phones because it's dangerous enough for my phones for me to carry one. So I cannot carry two. So I can't have my camera phone and then my, you know, daily use phone. But other than that, I loved that phone so much. The keyboard is just... I guess that's I guess that's kind of my it's question wonderful. is okay so obviously this is a portrait mode uh you know keyboard so you're going to be thumb typing mm-hmm. here which by the way the keyboard on the key one I don't know how many of you guys like ever got to really use it but it's really good it's really mm-hmm. nice and tactile it's actually capacitive so you can scroll with it they put the mm-hmm. fingerprint reader in the space bar so you just put your thumb on the space bar and it unlocks oh, and I loved that there are so many things that they did right with this device. Like they mm-hmm. did so much that they did right. There's some things they did wrong, but they did a lot right with the key one. What do you, I mean, do you have any desire as someone who's carrying a pixel five 
to use something like the Astro Slide made by Planet Planet something Planet Computers. I mean, would you yeah, ever consider I mean, have carrying something like that? Yeah, I mean, for me, if you ever gave me the choice to have a smartphone that had a, a physical keyboard on it, I'm always going to be interested. I'm a fidgety kind of person. You know, I do a lot of weird stuff with my hands. You know, I like to just fidget. So for me, like, typing on, a, you know, a smartphone with, like, swipe or whatever, like, I'm the one that, like, hits each letter individually. I don't use swipe. I can't. Like, I literally cannot use swipe anymore. The tactility of of a, of a proper hardware keyboard is something yeah. that I find really, I find really satisfying. Um, and I, I, you know, a lot of people that talked about the key one and the, and the key two, you know, they'd say things like, oh, well, I can't type any faster on the key one. I can type faster using swipe with the software yeah. keyboard. And I, like, I get that. But the difference for me is that I can type more accurately. Once I got used to using yeah. that keyboard, I was backspacing way less often. I was really accurate. So you know, if, if I could type out two sentences without making a mistake, I could probably type just as fast on a software keyboard. With the odds of me making a mistake, I would make five or six times and have to backspace and retype a word. Whereas on the key one, just super consistent, virtually never making any yeah. kinds of mistakes at all. Yeah, um, I, I've i always loved the phones that had the keyboard. I used the, it was always like, you know, the uh not go phone but straight talk i always use straight talk phones before we got together because i was a cheap person and i would get the um the blackberry knockoffs i had one that was literally like maybe like that tall but it was like super super wide to and give you a wider keyboard the, yeah and of all the blackberry knockoffs that one was like really good like it looked so much like uh I don't remember the exact model of that BlackBerry, but it's the one that blew up that everybody was using. Um, and then after that phone, I got the one that had that would slide up. It was a Nokia. Mm -hmm. No, it was a Samsung. It was a Samsung, and it looked like you know it was vertical, and then you would slide it up, and you'd have that full keyboard there. That phone was amazing. I would sit there and just slide it up and down, slide it up and down. And it's, then when we got together, you gave me one of your old ones that did the same thing. It so. was the HTC Evo Shift was the one that you that yes. you briefly used. It was one of mine, and that was a really cool yeah, little Android phone. One. <laughs> one of my favorite things about it was I would I would play when I used it. I used I would play like emulators and shit on it because you could slide it up and then map controls to your keyboard there, mm -hmm. and play games on it, which worked really well i guess the question for me is there, there's a couple of things so i talked about this um astro slide and i've talked about another one called the fx tech uh pro one which is really similar to astro slides the biggest difference being this is more standard keyboard whereas the astro slide has that like actual heart like mechanical style keyboard um I guess the biggest thing there would be just the idea of, of you. I imagine you never use your pixel this way other than to watch a video. You're not going to sit there and like browse anything that direction. I think that's the primary thing. And that's something that I mentioned in my video talking about the Astro slide was that like that, you know, super narrow or if you turn it that way, super wide and then short screen because that's the orientation you'd be using it in. I don't know how conducive that is of like getting anything done. Maybe if you were to like, even if you like cut it in half into two apps, you know, you could do something like that. But then it's like, I don't know. Like I like. I think... Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I like the idea of having a keyboard. I just don't know how much I love the idea of having it be that direction. I I kind of liked a thumb keyboard. Keep it in mm -hmm. the orientation this way just felt yes, more natural. I, I think if you're talking about as far as being productive, having it in that 
in that portrait mode right there, like that's the way to go. But if you're just talking about just using it for, you know, recreation or just like sending messages or whatever, for me, I don't give a crap to take the extra couple seconds to use the keyboard that way, you know? Yeah. Um, that's just, that's my thoughts on it. If, if I have a physical keyboard, I if I'm using messages, sure, I don't care to use it that way. But it just has to be an option first, so... Yeah, um, that that that's my biggest thing. It's just it's just the orientation issue. I've heard with the FX Tech one that apparently it's pretty rough around the edges in terms of like camera performance is apparently like abysmal. I'm really curious about the Astro Slide version. I'd I'd love to have one just to play with and review. It looks a little thick, mm -hmm. but you know it's packing in a big old mechanical keyboard. I want to feel what those well, you keys know how look I like. I feel about thick phones, so. You do like the thick phones. I do like the thick boys. <laughs> so, so, you know, speaking of, you know, productivity minded devices, which I like, I've said on here many times, it's not just productivity minded devices, it's different devices. I'm just bored of normal phones. I'm bored of slab candy bar style phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Speaking of, you know, just doing weird things with phones, there's one of the things that, you know, I made, I made a video on um, this last week that I released that actually has done pretty darn well, if I'm not mistaken. I think we're up over a thousand views now. Let's see here. Yeah, 14-ish, 14, 14 1400 or so, um, is the idea of attaching the USB hub to the Duo dock. So a couple things I want to I want to quickly say there is that I was really pleased to, to find out from the guys over at Duo Doc, actually, I'll pull up the post here. Uh, they posted in the Facebook group that they got so many orders. This is from Adam. Um, so many orders that they had to get another 3D printer. So wow. <laughs> I'm really pleased that my video was in some way able to, you know, not find the post. It's buried in my notifications and I don't want to dig through it. But he posted saying that they got a lot of orders from the videos that I made. So that's awesome. I hope you guys really enjoyed it as much as I did. My review was very honest and I said what I thought. I still need to give this one away. I still have it sitting here. I've got a bunch of people. I got to go back through it and I got to mail it. I'll probably do that um, early next week. Well, you got your surgery on Tuesday. I'll find it early next week to get this thing mailed out and get, and get in contact with somebody. I will be mailing it out. So the first thing I thought of whenever I got the thing in hand was to um, attach a USB hub to it. And so that's what I did. And let me grab it. This thing's been really cool. Like, I, you know, I love the idea of being able to, to, to drop the duo into a dock. And then, you know, for somebody that you could set up a whole workstation like this, just have a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and this thing with like a flash drive in it or, or attach it to a, a, a port, you know, an external hard drive, come home from working on your duo, using it and then come home and drop it into the dock. And then now you're on a bigger screen. Now you're, you're using a mouse and a keyboard and you could totally do that. Like it's not, you know, I'd love to see Microsoft, they're not going to, but I'd love to see them do something like what Samsung has done with Dex or have like a proper desktop OS. I need to experiment with, there are some apps I think that will emulate a desktop environment. Maybe I could do a video on that. If I could get one of those to work on Duo, if it could get it to span properly. I, I remember there was a device that I think Asus made back in the day that was a tablet and it came with a, it was a phone that came with a tablet. You took your phone and then it would, there was a, a slot in the back of the tablet that the phone would slide I into. I remember that. And then it would turn it into a tablet interface. Like I yeah. love the idea of one device that changes in what it, it's doing. So it's it's a portable device. Well, now it's your desktop device. Like I love the idea mm -hmm. of Samsung Samsung Dex. You drop your phone into a thing. Now you're on a full desktop. You essentially have a, a Chromebook style station with Android apps and a full browser. And um, you know, for someone like you, I mean, you you the time you spend on your computer. You're pretty, pretty much the only time you're on a computer is if you're gaming. That's right, yeah. But, like, you know, would you... Like I kind of It's kind of crazy to me that the... I guess the folding phone is just the new version of that because you have a small mm -hmm. small phone, now it's a big tablet. 
But like, it's kind yeah. of amazing to me that that concept didn't take off the ability to to transform. I think it was literally called the Asus Transformer. It might have been what it was called. To transform a phone into a desktop environment or into something bigger, like you know, it's probably a narrow. Like you, that's probably like you know, if you could dog your Pixel into a monitor and everything, you probably wouldn't really use that, would you? Well, I mean, that's just just because I'm not really like a tech savvy person. If I were, it'd probably be a lot different. I don't think I'm a good example for no, the yeah, majority I mean, of people. <laughs> I, I think you are a good example. Or maybe I am a great example. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a good example of the majority of people. But I think that there's a yeah. certain subset of people that would use something like that. And, and it was really cool to me to see how many people were commenting and you know were surprised that the Duo would work that way. It's pretty standard mm -hmm. Android. Like technically any Android phone can do this, what I'm talking about. It's just interesting for the Duo because the Duo, for one thing, is already a productivity-minded device. And then two, because it is um, it is a three-by-two aspect ratio with both screens, if you drop it into a monitor, you know, a phone, you get a, a monitor with a phone in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the Duo, yeah. it spreads out across it, most of the screen. It just looks right. It, yeah. it, it just transfers really well. And then you can span your apps or if you want to keep multitasking, like it works like pretty damn well. Like actually for a, like a little bit, I was playing around where I was, I had my, my duo in the dock over here and my right monitor was displaying the duo and I had like Twitter up and I had like YouTube up and I was playing a YouTube video and this sounds coming out of the monitor like it should. Um, and I, I was basically treating the dual monitor as if it was a dual computer setup. So I would be over here doing something. And if I wanted to change the video, I would reach over and I would touch on the duo and do whatever I wanted to do over there. And I was like, this, this kind of works. Like it, it actually mm -hmm. really isn't bad. I, I could totally see like, you know, maybe you have, maybe, you know, you don't have a proper home office. Maybe all you have room for is like a monitor and a keyboard. Maybe you don't have the money to go buy a tower, but you have a duo. Just do that. Drop it in and, and use that. Like you could a hundred percent, you could do that, and it would it would totally work. Mm -hmm. It just it's just like phones are so powerful now that it surprises me. Like that Samsung, that more people aren't doing this, and that it's not more popular because it totally yeah. makes sense. There should be like I think that there's a laptop that's like a dock laptop phone dock thing. Where like you you literally uh, like plug your phone into this laptop that's literally just a screen and then a keyboard and a battery mm -hmm. and it'll charge your phone. You plug it in and it just displays out to that screen and now yeah. you can treat your phone like it's a laptop. Next yeah, dock that was is really cool. It's called Next Dock. That's all it is. You just plug your phone to it. Like it's. I kind of think it's brilliant. Like I think it's a mm -hmm. really interesting idea and I don't know why more. Am I crazy? Like why? Like why is this not a thing? Like you, you carry. I just don't think it's advertised well enough. I think that if you had it, if you had it in any way, if you could get it mainstream, advertised, I think more people would be into it. But well, you don't see that, and it'd be perfect right now too in the in the middle of this pandemic too. Well, it's everybody yeah, I mean, needs a computer right now. Right, and you have a phone. Like mm -hmm. everybody has a phone, and and most people have a phone that is reasonably powerful like i think it's so easy for us to like not... maybe maybe it's because it's not profitable enough to advertise it maybe they'd maybe companies would rather you buy like a full-on computer maybe but like man what a way to lock somebody into an ecosystem too like mm -hmm. I, I think it's so we, people so regularly underestimate how powerful their phones are Mm -hmm. like we just don't realize it like we just think it's like oh it's a phone like no it can play like fully 3d rendered games it can like like i can load up power director pro and can render a video and it's like mm -hmm. not insanely slower compared to my core i7 9900k 1070 ti like my expensive you know desktop will beat it but it's not by as much as you would think it would be like it's not that different so it's just crazy that so many people carry a really powerful computer in their pocket but they're restricted to using it essentially in this format yeah like that's all you yeah. can do with it is this 
when mm -hmm. you could just plug it into something and you've got like a proper computer potentially. And it's just it's like, what a weird untapped resource that we all, yeah. how many people are like, oh, I can't afford like a computer, but they have a Galaxy S10, which mm -hmm. is pretty freaking powerful. Like if you compared it to like, how much would you have to spend on a laptop to have a, to have more raw power? Several hundred dollars in terms of like, you're going to run a geek bench or an n two test or something like that. It'll hold its own, like to a pretty high spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that arm computing, arm software coming along further and further may potentially help just in the long run because these phones are all running arm. Just, I, I just love the idea. And I, I love that so many other people have loved the idea of dropping this thing into a dock and using it like a tradition, more like a traditional computer and what it's capable of. Yeah. It's really cool to me. So something else I've been doing with the duo is I've been gaming on it a little bit and I'm not a mobile gamer. I had somebody say something to mm -hmm. me. What was it? I said something about, I forget what it was, but they, they said something about how they, how they weren't addicted to games or something like that. And it just made me laugh because I, I, I tweeted a couple of things about playing Pokemon on my duo. And I guess people immediately assumed that like, I'm always playing games on my phone and like I literally never play games on my phone. No. But what happened was I bought something and I have to go grab it because it's in the other room. Hold on. Two seconds. <laughs> Okay, I'm back from studio to living room. So I bought something, and there is a full video on this coming, um, but I figured I could talk about it here a little bit and kind of give a little bit of an overview. Because the video, I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little burpy from that Popeye's chicken sandwich, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be okay. So there's a video coming where I'm going to really go over the software and kind of show you the experience of using this thing. But this is a controller that I saw. I saw a couple people talk about it. I saw somebody tweet about it recently. I've seen it in the Surface Duo subreddit, and I've seen it maybe somewhere else. Um, and I looked around, and this is the one I decided to go with. And basically, it's called the it's called the Wii Two T, and it's spelled W E E, like Wii Two T <laughs> telescopic gamepad. And the idea is that you would take your phone and you would shove it in there and now you've got like a big old Game Boy. Mm -hmm. And it works pretty well. And I would actually say in some ways it works better on the Duo than anything else. <laughs> because for one thing, okay, oh my God. <laughs> I'm fully aware that it, that it sticks up there. Like I get that, that it's, you know, it's sticking up like that. But, um... Go home here. Get off Twitter. Go away, Twitter. Play I get Twitter that it's, on your Game Boy? Yeah, I get that it's tall, but the aspect ratio is better because, um, especially if you're using emulators, because this is an aspect ratio that older games are at. So it mm -hmm. works really well. And then if you want to get really stupid and you want to play a Nintendo DS emulator, then just do that. And now you've got your top screen and your bottom screen, like us playing Mario Kart on it with like yep. uh, up res the, the graphics and everything. And it looks really good. And I was like, this is like the ultimate Nintendo DS. Like it's a super high res Nintendo DS and it works really well. My only real complaint with this thing is that obviously it was not made for a phone that is this thin. So there's some extra space in here. It kind of wants to, you, yeah. you can, you can move it around a bit. Um, Overall, and I say this in the video, it's 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 a little janky. Like you can kind of hear, like it, it's it's got more flex to it than I would like. The actual gamepad bits are fine; they feel good. It's this middle bit that just there's too much. Be careful. <laughs> there's too much flex and movement to it, but this works really well. However, mm -hmm. I found myself doing something else because I, I started playing. Game Boy Band Simulator, Pokemon Fire Red Omega. I stopped playing Pokemon at like maybe Gen 3, I think. Maybe Gen 3. I'm way behind. I played like Let's Go Pikachu when that came out because I was like, oh yeah, that's like my childhood. But I don't know these new Pokemon. They confuse me. One of them is like a chandelier, I think, and that, that makes me upset. Um, it's stupid. So I stopped playing. But Fire Red it's Omega stupid. is awesome. They took Fire Red, which was which was a remake of the original Pokemon Red, mm -hmm. and then they so they took that remake that was you know original Fire Red remade on the Game Boy Advance. So someone took that and then they they altered it. 
so that you get i think there's like up to gen 3 pokemon in it the and it's more difficult it's the cranked up the difficulty like for instance in like fire red or in red red or fire red brock your first gym leader i think all he has is like a geodude and a onyx well on this one He's got like a Geodude, an Onyx, a Vulpix, a Rhyhorn, a, Ka- a Kabuto, I think. Like he's like way more difficult. And his Rhyhorn has fucking Flamethrower or something like that. Because you think like, oh, well, I'll just use, you know, Grass types are strong against Rock. We throw out your Grass type and guess what? Fucking Rhyhorn's going to fuck you up. So it's a lot more difficult. I like it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. So I started playing it and I was, you know, after a little bit, I was like, well, I played it a bit like that. And then a little bit later, I didn't feel like grabbing that thing. And I just had my duo. So I just folded it over and played it like this with the touch controls. And that was fine. And I even made a, I made a, a setup of controls, which I see if I can show you this because it's actually pretty amusing. I made a, a set of controls where, um, load my save state, where I put an additional a and b on the side up here next to my finger which may look crazy but if you're holding your duo like this you can reach your buttons you can reach your a and b that are over here instead of having to reach way over so i just put another so you know if i want to walk up and talk to this guy i can just do this and talk to him and do whatever i want without having to reach over so i could be like you know browsing twitter like i was responding to people on twitter while i was playing pokemon only downside is Pokemon's running, and then it, when you touch this other screen, this is paused. So you have to go back and hit it again, and then it will resume. But if you're like watching a YouTube video, the video will continue playing no matter what you're doing. So works pretty well. Well, then mm-hmm. I remembered that I had this thing. The oh, bit, yeah. The 8-bit do zero two, which is a little Bluetooth controller. So then this might be my favorite way to play an emulator with my phone. I took my duo, I loaded up the Pokemon game, I turned it long ways and folded back one of the screens, so it was sitting like this, and I just kind of mm-hmm. set that on, on the arm of the chair next to me, pulled this out, paired it up, and just started playing it. So I'm watching, I'm watching TV, <laughs> and this is just sitting there kind of in my line of sight, and I'm playing Pokemon, and it looks really good it looks nice and clear the speaker sounds good enough and i'm like this is a great way to sit here and play these retro games on my duo so i like this a lot but i'm I'm almost tempted to be like this this is really good this th- this right here in mm-hmm. laptop mode is a really it's a really weirdly good way to play to play retro games and I remember you. We have another controller laying around here somewhere. That's one that is like a, it's like a regular controller, but this thing flips up and it's a grip to put your phone in. Remember what yeah, I'm talking the Moga. about? Yep, Moga made it. Yep. And there for a while, like you used that, you used that for a while too, playing something. Yeah, I loved that thing. It's still um, here. And it still totally functions. Animal Crossing and mm-hmm. Phantom Hourglass, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it. It, it works really well. And you know what's funny mm-hmm. is like they advertised with this thing, like, oh, it's compatible with whatever. Like in the video that I filmed about it, I, I played Fortnite with it. And it works. Mm-hmm. It works fine. Uh, it's native. It works natively. You just load up Fortnite and the buttons all just function. And apparently Call of Duty works with it. I didn't test that. Um, but if you want a game on this thing, it's really good. If you want to do, I, I think, with xCloud streaming, Game Pass is streaming, I think you have to use an Xbox controller. I don't think it will work with that. I did not test it, but that's the literature. I believe you have to have yeah. an Xbox controller. But I'm just, I'm, I'm really, you know, going back to the idea of using a wide, short screen, you know, holding it this way, kind of being sucky on Android. Well, it's not so bad on the Duo because it's, it's a weird aspect ratio. So for me, you know, if I wanted to, even just using Twitter and holding it this way, if it'll rotate, rotate. Here's Duo. I'm, I'm trying to show somebody something that doesn't want to do it right. You know, it's not great doing it that way. There's my ring light really nice and prominently. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can, it's better. It's, it's you know, infinitely better than, than on a normal, you know, a quote unquote normal uh, resolution it's screen. Super long and vertical now. And if you're gaming, 
you know, games are either 16 by 9 or something like that. And 20 by what what is it now? It's like basically 2 by 1. So you basically have a screen that's twice as tall as it is wide. So you yeah. wind up with these big black bars on the side. So I feel like gaming, you know, is a really under utilized aspect of the duo you can totally do i don't do it a lot and i'll probably Mm -hmm. like i'll probably play fire red omega for you know a a week or two and i'll forget about it and i won't game on my duo anymore like i was before yeah but it's really good like it kind of shocked me because i I, you know i used to game on my on my devices like that i used to game on my Mm -hmm. i would do the same thing on my key one because i could map my controls to the keyboard and it just felt better but having that screen resolution it just continues to be my favorite one of my favorite things about the duo is the the aspect ratio of the screen Mm -hmm. do you ever i mean you don't you don't game on your phone hardly at all is there any is there anything that like would you ever consider carrying something like this to drop i'd kind of be tempted to see what the pixel looks like in it it probably it probably be pretty good yeah i mean I i would have to have a controller or something tactile i absolutely hate playing mobile games where i have to touch the screen yeah i just i don't like that to me that just feels really wrong it's not anything i'm ever going to get into so i have to have something physical to to press or yeah you know i've got i need buttons well yeah i don't remember this was a while back but like one of my nephews was playing mario on a tablet like like an iphone or something like that like Mm -hmm. an ipad it was a platform. It might not have been Mario, but it was like a proper platformer. And they're running and jumping and doing stuff. And I was just mesmerized. I was like, how are you doing that? Or they play like Fortnite on an iPad and they're running around and they're yeah. aiming and shooting. My mind can't, it doesn't, it can't mm-hmm. do it. I need, I need, you know, I need a mouse and a keyboard yep. or I need a controller. My, my brain yeah. just, it's very strange how, how their, their minds just work in a, in a very different way. Cause that's what they're used to, I suppose. So for me, for kids, they probably look at this and they're like, why do you need that for? That's stupid. What, is that? <laughs> what do you need? You know, like, I think one of your nephews saw this and they were like cracking up about like, what, well, you know, what's that? I'm like, oh, it's, uh, you know, it's literally got a keychain loop on it. You know, you could just keep it on yeah. your keychain. It's this little, I'll put a link to this in the description too, if anybody wants to buy it. It's a really, it feels, it feels really good. 8-Bit Dude does a really good job. The buttons, like, I'm a... I'm one of those people that like whenever I even review this thing, like I'm like showing you what it sounds like to click the buttons in the microphone. Like that means a lot to me. Yeah, and they've that done a, really clicky. They've done they've done a really good job oh, with yeah. these things. Their their stuff is is really, really solid. So I think I guess that's about I mean, I guess that's about all I've got for the week. We you know, we had a better week in terms of there being news. The S twenty one's out and it looks good. It's a little bit cheaper, which is cool. I have a video Maybe I start previewing what I've got coming up if I've got more stuff coming. That might be like a good teaser yeah. thing to do on the podcast. So I've talked about the video I've got upcoming um, for this thing. Talked about that. So bigger, more in-depth. I'm going to talk about the app that it uses. I'm going to talk about game performance. I'm going to show some gameplay off. I've got a video coming about Launcher 10, which is the Windows phone launcher that you can run on duo i've got a video about it coming out as well those will both be next week in addition to the news radar stuff um we talked about open world story driven star wars game coming by ubisoft think maybe like assassin's creed but it's star wars maybe a good way to think about it indiana jones game is coming from bethesda a uh, guy that todd howard is apparently involved so that's interesting that's Apparently. really interesting. Yep, that could be a cool thing as well. So a lot of, a lot of cool stuff happened this last week. Glad to have some news going again that I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, yeah, I guess we're going to wrap it up there. So you can head over to scaryflutteral.com to find links to everything. Twitter account, as usual, it's a good place to find me. Good place to interact. There is a Surface Duo Facebook group. You can join as well. I think it's called Surface Duo Central. And there is a link in the description to my Twitter account and to the new Discord server, which I started up about a week ago. And we are sitting at, right now, 39 members. That is actually considerably more than I thought it would be. Um, so cool. Thanks for joining the uh, the Discord. More of you guys can join. And 
there's content suggestions being thrown in there there's questions and topics about the surface duo there's discussions about all kinds of things i'd love to get maybe like some gaming going on in there too i see people a lot of times over mm -hmm. there so it says they're playing a game so maybe we'll get some gaming sessions going i think it's a, a cool cool way to have some community there that is you know maybe you don't use facebook i'm very close to deleting my facebook again it's beginning to really irritate me maybe discord will be where you're going to find me going forward we shall see so with all that said and done, thank you for joining me again today, Jesse. My name is Shane. This was Podcast Revived. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.